Hello, it is Sunday, and I uh, had an amazing wedding on Friday, a uh, sparkler send-off. There will be a future video on that, and then last night we were at a golf course, and we got an amazing sunset, so I'm going to make a future video on that as well. Um, and today, I actually have, I'm going to say, maybe a more ambitious day, so I got a really last-minute wedding booking for this Sunday, and I already had family sessions lined up, so it is currently 8 27 a.m. Um, as you can see up here and I'm going to do a family shoot at 9 9 30 10 and 10 30 then I'm going to come back here and I have an hour to edit and upload this video and then I have to go to the wedding so if you're seeing this at around 12 noon that was a successful plan if you're seeing this around 8 p.m. I had failed and uh kind of had to go to the reserve plan, unfortunately. So today we're going to be talking about Photoshop and the things that I do in Photoshop. Pretty much uh, my main use for Photoshop these days is just um, removing objects. I know the functionality of the program is quite insane. Um, I've actually been using Photoshop since I was 12 years old. That was my first like um, computer program that I really got into. And it was the first way that I also made money too. I started making like banners and things for the internet a um, long, long time ago. So I know a lot of things and I use very, very, very few of them. Um, these days as a photographer, since um, you can do so much in Lightroom and you can do so many kind of the natural photography things, anything you could do in a dark room, plus obviously a lot more um, in Lightroom. And Photoshop, I find, is just kind of like if something needs a little bit more like control, specifically over removing um, like different things like cars and signs and um, little wings around Johnny's head here. Um, so we're going to get to it. And so we're going to start with way number one. Way number one is content aware fill. And if it works, um, which it does like 80% of the time, I would say maybe even more, um, it's really, really awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the car and you can just use the lasso tool. I'm using technically the patch tool, but I'm not using the functionality of the patch tool and you hit delete and it comes up with content aware fill and you just click okay. And you hope that it deletes. Perfect. Right? Nailed it. All right, so that's way number one. That's by far the easiest way to do things. But if I'm doing things like this little um, piece that's coming on Johnny's head, if I was to like just kind of circle around, it might do a weird job being that close to um, something that's actually important. So you want a little more control to do something like that. So um, I would say the other or the, the main thing that you probably learn is this clone tool down here, clone stamp. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to set the pickup point, which is um, you hold down option or you hold down alt. And you zoom in a little bit. You can zoom in as far as you want to do a more specific job. I'm also, um, I usually use kind of hardness somewhere between like 10 and 20. Um, in a situation like this, if you use 100, it's a very, very clean line. Um, if I was, maybe it actually does need um, a little bit more. Again, it's an adaptive learning process. So you just do this, and it disappears. And I can personally see the brush stroke there. So I'm going to just kind of lasso maybe this part here and do quick content aware fill and see if it changes things up a bit. Nope, that's making New Year's. So move that away. You can also use the arrows if you like get just a little bit too close and you're kind of like this. You can slide it down this way. Wants to keep replicating an ear. All right, we're just going to leave it like that. Um, the other, the main thing that I also use uh, keyboard wise is I use Control D or Command D um, a lot. And that's basically just deselecting whatever I've selected. That is kind of two ways to do things the clone stamp or content aware fill. The other way to do things is you come into this little here um, and you go to the spot healing brush, and that will remove things. Um, if it's like a very, very easy item to remove, like the signage up over here, you can just kind of do that. And usually it disappears. Um, you can kind of stretch the boundaries of it and see if it'll delete that. Hey, it did. And maybe this sign too. That works out well enough. Um, and again, it's like, you'll notice when, like if you're just staring at an item and you remove it and you're staring at just that spot, you'll be like, oh, it looks like for sure that they can see that I've edited something there. And the truth is that they probably can't, that you're just, um, I don't know, you're hindsight seeing it, I guess. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So maybe this fence is also distracting. As you can see, there's a real rabbit hole to kind of go down here. So if you start doing something, you're like, oh, I'm going to clean this image up. Like, look at how good of a job that did. That's amazing. Um, and then the other thing you can do uh, that does the same thing kind of as a healing brush, I guess, uh, the spot healing brush is you can use the patch tool and you just kind of like do this. So you just circle it and then drag it to a cleaner spot. We're going to get to that in another photo um, in a minute. But as you can see, there are a lot of things you can clean up in an image if you begin down that road. So um, I recommend doing as much as you can possibly in camera so you don't have to do this because you could spend a lot of time cleaning up images. But obviously a lot better of an image. Um, we'll go up here to the original 
original history. Like, pretty good, right? I still haven't cleaned this up here, but other than that, there's just a demonstration. I've already done this for the actual photos. All right, so moving on to another photo here. This is the bag. Um, the bag has been pre-selected, and I'm just gonna do a quick content aware remove and see if it works, hitting the delete key, and did an okay job. Usually if it's doing weird stuff like that, it's because you um, have something accidentally selected. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use kind of a combination of two tools. I'm going to use the this um, clone stamp as well. And I'm just holding down Alt um, to set what point it's going to pick up from. And then just drawing that out quickly. So there you go. Um, very happy with that. Also up here, there's another little, a little light. So if you're kind of picking where you want to pick the content from that looks like I've drawn it on so I'm gonna go lasso and I'm gonna I'm gonna let the computer do the the hard work for me and I'm just gonna keep doing it until I like it I could have just used the clone stamp there I'm gonna have to use a clone stamp it's not entirely doing it for me unfortunately cool um, now no green sign no little bag boom simple cleaned up. If it's going to be like a portfolio image or it's something that they're going to put in their album or um, just kind of one of those key shots that if you do a favorites gallery within your larger gallery, um, it's uh, it's very much a good thing to do. All right, going to move on here. This was the sign that I tried actually really hard. I didn't put it in the entire video yesterday to remove from, uh, from the scene. And I'm first going to try a content aware fill. Um, I also have the navigator set up here so that I can zoom around. And then if you want to drag around, um, you hold the space bar. Sorry if I'm doing a poor job of explaining my shortcuts and, um, it's just, I've literally been doing it for so long that I don't remember why I do things. So I'm a poor teacher at Photoshop right now, but I will learn. So content aware, delete. Um, you know what? That's like, that's good enough. So I'm going to leave that and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to a little bit closer. And I'm going to hold down Alt to set my point, um, maybe over here. And I'm going to come in and just kind of draw over this. Nope, that's not going to work. I'm going to come from down here. So the idea is to keep it kind of the same color. So if you kind of like grab a spot there, you get kind of that like little gradient drop off there. I think that looks all right. It makes me happier. You can also go ahead and remove these vents if you want and uh, maybe the pot lights. I don't know. Use your discretion. Probably don't do too much because then your life's going to be a lot of time spent in Photoshop. <clears throat> All right. So the main thing uh, that I use the patch tool for is actually um, removing under eye bags. And I'm going to run you through how I do that in like 10 seconds. So first I make a duplicate layer. I just drag that onto the layer. Um, and then I kind of zoom in here. And I'm not saying that you need to do this. I'm, this is just the demonstration image that I chose. And you select it, whatever you want to delete, and then you just drag it to like a cleaner piece of skin, which is his cheek. And boom. And then I always go back like, um, so that was without, and that was with. And then I usually leave it around like somewhere like 50%. So it just kind of softens it a bit. This is specifically important if you're doing like close-ups of, um, it's also if you like kind of butcher the light as well, that if there's just like weird light happening and you're creating bags that don't even exist really in real life, um, which is a possibility if you're in like forests and whatever, um, that I come in here and I do this for them to just kind of like clean everything up. But that looks good, I think. Um, also, I, I guess I'll point out here, the, um, what other image do I have? Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run it on this quickly. This is maybe the best tip. Um, I kind of hit it in the video because I didn't, don't want everybody to know about it because I'm still a little bit selfish. Um, it's called Portraiture and it basically what it does is it airbrushes and retouches um, automatically and you can put it in a batch. So um, if you look online, I'll do a video in the future about this probably maybe, I don't know if you want it, remind me, about how to create your own actions in, uh, in Adobe Photoshop and basically what I do for every single image when I post process my galleries out is I go up here. Um, this is all automated. So I just point it at the folder that my, all my final images are in and I go image size and sorry, it's on my other monitor. It unclicks this comes up here to percent and does 98%. So what that does is it squishes just like just a little bit. So it makes the width 98%. So pretty much makes everybody lose five pounds, which everybody appreciates. And then it comes up here to filter, portraiture. 
um, which is maybe like the best hidden tool. Um, you have to buy this. This is an additional plugin, but it's 100% worth it if you're processing out lots of weddings. And usually I just leave it um, on default. It, what it does is it just smooths out skin. So if you have something like more of a close-up image, you maybe want to go to normal or medium. Um, but for the most part, or I'll go to normal just to kind of show you the, the power of it, I guess. And take a second to load. And as you can see, it does a lot at 100%. And I come up here to fade portraiture. And I'll show you kind of the the scale of this. So that is with nothing. And usually I'm leaving it somewhere around there. Maybe about here. And it's just like a nice softness to the skin um, that everybody does appreciate, especially brides and bridesmaids. Um, and it does a lot of like, I think it makes people like their final images a lot more. Obviously don't overuse it because if you're leaving images out like that, it's going to be a little bit wild, but um, somewhere just kind of subtle, wherever you think the point is, um, go to that point and dial it back a little bit. I think Chanel said something like that, like whatever the last thing you put on, um, take it off before you leave, unless it's your pants, I guess. Um, all right. And last image here. So I love this image with the exception of the tree coming out of his head. So we're going to try, try the good old content aware fill. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that I can make a better selection around here. You can also use the pen tool instead of a lasso tool if you want to be like super accurate. But it's another topic for another day. Five ways to do everything, 10 ways to do everything. And this is going to be kind of miraculous if it just works. So hit delete, content aware fill. That's damn good. Going to clean that up just a little bit with uh, a little, little custom. So my... My hope is that if I select something along the same plane, I think that's going to work pretty well. And I'm going to dial the hardness down a little bit since uh, since it is kind of the soft focus roll off that I want to kind of replicate. And also this stuff here is looking a little weird. Get rid of you. And sometimes you can see the edges of where you select. So I usually just go in there and I um, just kind of like massage the final line. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, I have 20 minutes now to get ready and get to my uh, all my family sessions. So wish me luck. Hopefully you're watching this at noon because it's kind of a challenge for me to put that together now um, because it is a bit of a, a crazy ambitious project that I'll probably never do again. Um, also just tip don't do family shoots in the morning of wedding days it's just it's too much so um that's my my tip to you as well as these photoshop tips so hopefully you enjoyed these um pick up portraiture if you're processing out a lot of images it really does speed things along and make your couples like the final product a lot better um just because cameras are a little bit too um they show a little bit too too much detail even with a good makeup artist and there's no sense to go into photoshop and open every image individually and retouch and but it is good to batch process that it doesn't really take any extra time it just kind of runs and it takes maybe an hour to run through an entire wedding gallery and then it's just all done so those are my thoughts for today i will see you tomorrow in the course what day is tomorrow Tomorrow is day 30, which is technically the end of the course, but it's it might not be. I haven't decided yet. Maybe we keep going forever. 100,000 days of wedding photography. I don't know if there's enough content out there to do that. See you tomorrow.